this is a video on solving basic trig equations. Um, the most simplest kind there are, that's why it's very basic. A is 1, B is 1, C is 0, K is 0. So I'm solving for where sine, cosine, or tangent of an angle is a number. Specifically here, we're going to solve for tangent of the angle X. Where is that equal to 10 points, negative 10.7? Now I'm going to show you the steps I go through. There are other videos where I go much more slowly over this, and I, in some videos I have graphs so you can see what that really means, but these are just going to be a lot more quick, just the whole, just the solution. And then here is what I use, I tell students to use if they have trouble finding the other solution, but I do it visually. All right, so I'll show you both ways. Oh, not too pi, I just realized it's not too pi. Yeah, I made that wrong. Should be pi. <laughs> Oops. All right. So let's take a look at solving this. Okay. So here I would want to always, again, ask myself this question. And it may seem like, oh, why do I have to go through this every time? You do have to do it. You don't necessarily have to write it down once you've done enough of these. But you really do have to go through the process of thinking, what ratio am I using? Is it, if it's sine, it's going to be y over r. Cosine is going to be x over r. Tangent is going to be y over x. And that really affects things. So I want to ask myself, for what angle x in... And then remember, with tangent, I've got to think, well, where am I allowed to look at solutions? It's here and here, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, anywhere in here. And is the ratio y over x equal to puck? Puck, it's okay. My dog is having puppy mares. Puggy, it's okay, sweetheart. You're not getting chased. Sorry. <laughs> so I want to know where is that true? Uh, and again, what we're saying is that basically the movement in the y direction, right, the length of the y coordinate is 10 times, 10.7 times greater than the x direction. And one of them is positive, one's negative, right? So um, what I'm going to do then is now take the inverse tangent of both sides. So that will give me x equals inverse tangent of negative 10.7. And I'm solving all of these in radian mode. So make sure your calculator is in radian mode and go ahead and do this. And you should get that x is negative uh, 1.47761 radians. Okay. Now, um, what this is basically saying is that Now, I, I kind of expected this to be here because, remember, you have to have one of these movements or coordinates be negative for the ratio to be negative. <laughs> you keep falling asleep so quick. I wish I slept as well as he did. So, I mean, it must be here in this quadrant, right? So, um, let me go shake him. Around. He's really... Hey, hey, you're really asleep, buddy. Wow. All right. Sorry about that. He's just kind of distracting. So I'm going to go here, negative 1.47. Or remember, negative 1.57 is here. So we're talking, I must be, a different color, real close here, like that, right? And so when I drop down to the x-axis, right, to create my right triangle, and remember, in here is my reference angle right there. It's this rotation from the zero going in the negative direction to here. And that's negative 1.47761 radians. Right. But what that also means is that the length here, we can see that the y length is negative, the x length is positive, and this is 10.7 times greater than this. So it's tough. All right, so now that I've found the calculator solution, this is 3a, calculator. I now have to find the second, the other solution, I call the other solution, and I can tell that it's going to be in quadrant two where one, 
the x movement is negative and the y movement is positive so that their ratio is negative right and it's actually 180 degrees away so it's like here sorry if i could draw that right it'd be like like that <laughs> so that when i drop to the x axis Here's my reference angle right there. But this y coordinate is 10.7 times as great as the x coordinate, and the y is positive, the x is negative. All right. So how do I find this one? Well, I know it's pi away. Right? So I know that 3b, I'm basically just going to do um, negative, so x equal negative 1.47761 plus pi, right? And so, let's see, what will that give us? Negative 1.47761 plus, and I'm going to go ahead and invoke the actual pi. And I get 1.66398. Yeah. But normally, if these were not equidistant apart, I'd have to say 1.66398 plus 2k pi, and then negative 1.47761 plus 2k pi. But because they are equidistant, I can really just say that really um, this is going to be negative 1.47761 plus k pi, where k is an integer. Okay, and again. I'm using this, sorry. Tangent is whatever theta you get from the calculator plus pi. Sorry about that, 2 pi, it was wrong. It's just pi. Okay. And that should cover it. So you don't really have to put this plus 2k pi and this plus 2k pi. It wouldn't be wrong, it would just be redundant. So I've got a much longer video on, I think, tangent x equals 2.35 where I show you that. I actually put in values so you can prove it to yourself. So this would be your solution. Thanks so much for listening.